Good afternoon, everyone. We are wrapping up three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024 here in Las Vegas. I'm Rebecca Knight. In for also sitting alongside Dave Vellante. We've been sitting next to each other all week, and I yeah, I it's been great, Rebecca. This is like three months of live coverage, isn't it? Indeed, I mean, it just indeed. hasn't stopped in spring. Yes, but so. we've saved the best for last today. We're going to talk sustainability and AI, one of your favorite topics. Yeah, absolutely, we need we need energy. We're going to bring the energy. That's right, and we're going to we're going to yeah. make it sustainable too. Yeah. So I'd like to welcome to the show Sue Preston. She is the VP Worldwide Advisory and Professional Services for HPE Global Sales at HPE. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Sue. Thank you, pleasure to be here. And Sune Bastrop, he is the SVP and CIO at Danfoss. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Sune. Thank you, looking forward. So I want to start with you, Sune. Why don't you just tell our viewers a little bit more about Danfoss. Yeah, Danfoss, we're a family-owned company, right? The engineering, manufacturing, uh, headquartered out of Denmark with global operations in more than 100 countries, sales in more than 100 countries. We're in some of those very heavy industries like uh, hydraulics for those large machines that you see out there on the field, the construction, uh, and um, we do heating and cooling applications as well. And we have a part of our business doing silicon modules and electronics motion controls. So. What ties all of those businesses together is energy, right? So they all use energy, and our purpose here is to decarbonize those industries to save energy, and that's the core of our business. But so you're in the services organization, is that right? And, yes. And, and it, it, you have a specialty in sustainability, or is that just one of your many talents? One of our many talents, but um, the focus for me is sustainable data center modernization. So I have a, a, an advisory team and a professional services team um, that drive IT sustainability into customers and organizations. So we help them be more sustainable. Okay, now I, I, I'm going to throw some numbers at you. I don't know if you know the numbers. I certainly don't, but I've been in these conferences for the last six months. And I took a stat down, forecasted demand and power, 520 gigawatts of power is going to be needed by 2030, which is 8x the power today. I don't even know, I think that's all power. Um, but the other stat is, today, IT is about 4% yep. of the power consumed, rise going to 10%. Yeah. That I think we can probably agree on, as far as the, the giga, gigawatts, as they say, and back to the future, yeah. I'm not sure, but we know it's going up, and we know yeah. the, that, that technology as a culprit yep. is going through the roof. So is our objective to um, meet that demand or is it to lower the percent lower. Uh, overall? I, okay. I think re reduce is, is really key. Um, looking at, I, I look at the workloads, so from AI and the insatiable workloads, what is the energy and the consumption that that's going to take? And then where is it more efficient to run? Um, and then I think on the renewable side as well, where organizations can look at solar panel in order to drive that green energy as well. Um, and then the partnership with um, Sune from Danfoss was just fantastic because I think it brings um, innovation even more um, as to how we can help decarbonize but then, and then measure you know, and manage that uh, resource hungry AI and workloads that are out there. So can you be more specific as to some of the approaches that you use in the engineering angles? Right, absolutely. When, when we talk about energy, it's that full flow that Sue just uh, said that we talk about reducing the consumptions that we have. It's not about reducing the workloads so or the impa impact that we want to drive with this in the world. It's about reducing the energy consumptions, right? Mm. So when we do that, uh, we reduce it on the cooling side, so the, the energy that we use to cool these large data centers, yeah. that's what we have innovated yeah. on together. We reduce the energy when we run those workloads, and, and we have, uh, in our own data center, where we use HP GreenLake technologies, those two factors, uh, making sure that you focus on cooling and that you focus on optimizing your workloads, have been able to slash 50% power consumption. 50%. So, and then when we move further into the value chain of energy within the data centers, it's about reusing the energy that we yep. already have. So, Energy doesn't go away, it just transforms from one form to another, right? So we, we put electricity into the data centers, yeah. and what comes out, the waste product, is heat. So we, we want to reuse that energy, heat. we want to capture that heat, that's the other part that we have co-innovated on, so that we have heat recovery stations, right? Okay, so cooling the, the hot system, and then optimizing, yeah. gets you 50%. 
and then you take the heat out and then you you heat something else the town or yes. okay how do you not lose the heat when the heat goes out <laughs> well, you you will lose some, right? Um, I think we know that all from our thermocans when we have them with hot water and over over the day it gets colder. Yeah. Yeah. So proximity is important here. And I think we'll yeah. see that the data center placements, when we look at it going forward, strategically will be placed closer to where we can reuse that heat. That means yeah. local communities, it's industrial symbiosis, breweries, uh, potato chip factories, fish farms. So by making sure that the proximity is short, you limit that energy uh, loss, and by using innovative technologies that we've done, you can get very close to 100% reuse out of that heat, as long as yeah. you keep short proximities. Yeah. So your heat loss is, is minimized, Minim almost, it's de minimis, is what you'd say, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think then with the positioning of the modular data center, that then where, you know, the proximity to that for the heat reuse, um, and then it's it's looking at, you know, sometimes one of our customers, they've got five megawatts of heat, which is far too much for the campus that they're in. So then you look into district, um, social value, housing, you know, um, driving all of the energy for that. So that's why there's more social value as well. So can you talk a little bit about that social value and the kinds of conversations that you're having with customers? Because, I mean, as we know, the move toward renewables and a more sustainable AI and, and IT system System is is the right thing to do for the planet, but it's also the right thing to do for their bottom line. So, what are the arguments that customers are most moved by, and and what what are you talking with them about? I think there's there's various um, there's various areas, and that's why I was um, pleased with the relationship with um, with Sune as well, because if we look at where the district energy locations are, so going in, one that I can mention um, is Embarred AI. So that is Bristol University, um, funded by the UK government, over 200 million, and that, I mean, the technology side, NVIDIA, it's five and a half thousand GPUs, so therefore it's going to create lots and lots of heat. And then how are we going to reuse that heat that's being created? It will be beyond the uh, university campus, so looking then into the um, district and the housing there. It, it's everywhere at the moment, even in the UK, the energy prices are increasing, so therefore it's driving more value because it's more green energy and heat that's being used to do, do the heating. And then there's other use cases as well, isn't there, Sune, that we're talking to customers about? I, I think very much, uh, when, when we look at, uh, at the European continent, the hydronic uh, systems are very uh, uh, well positioned for this, right? When we look at the other regions, yeah. we see uh, the, those industrial symbioses, yeah. we see campuses, um, and we'll eventually see that that energy is going to be needed because as we continue to see a growing energy demand, we need that energy. Yeah. So, and the technologies are available because we, we've innovated those technologies. So a lot of this is also about awareness, driving that awareness that you know, the cheapest energy is the energy we don't use. use. And you can say that the, the greenest energy is the, that energy that we reuse, reuse. right? So, yeah. and I, so it's, it's really all about awareness that the technology portfolios are available across our companies. What's the state of the, the industry? I remember when we started the Cube Research, it was known as Wikibon back then, we had a partnership with, with PG&E in California. They wanted to avoid the CapEx build out of you know, new utilities. Uh, didn't want to burn coal, obviously, either. So they were giving rebates mm -hmm. to customers that could prove that they're more energy efficient. So we were helping them do that. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the economic crisis hit and then everybody stopped caring. Yeah. But solar and wind at the time, you know, weren't, were kind of in, its, in the early days. They've come a long way since then. Where are we today in terms of the grid and the build out of the grid? Is, it, it, nuclear is actually back yeah. on the table. What's happening on that side, you know, the generation side, to help solve this problem? Yeah, I'm not a specialist in that area as well. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys have that. any sense of that, any visibility? Or? What, what we do see is that uh, there are limitations on availability of power. Right. Yeah. Um, but with our modular approach, you can literally place the data center where you want the data center to be, and you yeah. can extend the data center yeah. uh, from a modular perspective where you have av availability of power. Um, and it's, it's uh, also correct that the, the capacity of solar and wind is constantly increasing. It is. And I think that if we look at the economics in this, 
then every time we save energy and reuse uh, energy, it's approximately half the price per watt compared to every time that we have to uh, build up new capacities. It doesn't mean we shouldn't continue the journey on extending mm -hmm. the capacity side because we need that renewables, no matter if it's wind, solar, nuclear, but we at the same time have a much better business case by actually reducing and then ramping up the capacity yeah. in the grids. That's a great, that's a great insight. I yeah. didn't realize that. It's 50% less expensive to reuse than it is to, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Because uh, you're not laying down the, the CapEx. Yeah, so how are, I mean, when I think about the, the enormous environmental challenges that we face as, uh, the organizations face, but as, as that we face as human beings, I get so depressed, frankly. Wow. In your line of work, how do you, how do you keep going and in terms of maintaining the optimism and in terms of what you're seeing out there that you really can see can really make big differences in, in our lives. Rebecca, the planet will yeah. be fine. We'll it, just go yeah, away. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> the yeah, planet, the earth will make its way back. Yeah, oh, I mean, they, they, they might have a <laughs> tricky time. I think when you meet like-minded people, and that's, that's the conversation that we continually have. It's going to take everybody to come together from an ecosystem point of view. And I think if I look at it, there's, um, I see AI for good, so therefore um, we need AI in order to do the research and look at all of the innovation that can be driven. Um, we then have um, being sustainable when deploying the architecture and the infrastructure to drive that AI. And I think the ecosystem needs to come together. So we also partner with co-location, um, data center partners, you know, there's synergies between the technology areas that come together to make an impact because there is only one planet. And I think when you find the stakeholders, because you've, you've done the same as me, how do you drive that message internally? How are you transforming the cultural shift for people to you know, take seriously the things that they do that's going to make an impact on the future of the planet. It, and I won't be here, but the children, grandchildren. Indeed, and, and to, your, to, to, your, to your point, uh, you know, look, when, when, we're, when we're only, and I know it's still you know, a problem, when we're only 4% of the problem, a single digits, maybe it's, you know, you don't think it much, but when we're more than doubling, yeah. so the technology industry generally, HPE specifically, is taking this very seriously. Yeah. And I think, I think the, the large tech companies who get a lot of criticism are all on this, because it's a good business, yeah. you know, right to your point, Sune. Um, so, going back to my first question, about 4% to 10%. Percent. Do you think that collectively we can, we can keep it under, you know, four or five percent, or is it just going to be this, this battle to keep it under 10 percent? I think we need to, it's always, it's always difficult to have the future of where you're going to go because of the growth, and I think with the exponential growth of AI as well, mm. um, but we need to ensure that we're educating people to do the right thing when they're driving that workload in order to then, you know, not go over, yeah. and there's various different stats. So I do a lot of research and I see lots of um, different statistics. It's mind boggling, I know. It is, it? and you're on overload, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. I, I think, and, yeah. and in addition to this, as long as we reuse the energy, yeah. it actually doesn't matter that we go to 10 or even 15%. Right. Because if we take the combined impact to yeah. the world of AI, that is just massive. It's going to transform the world that we're living in. By the way, also the energy sector by grid optimizations and you know by optimizing that, uh, correlating with the data with, with grid capacities, we can typically take down 20% of those grid mm -hmm. capacities by just preheating or pre-cooling some of those very large grids. We, we've developed some of those algorithms also. Mm -hmm. So I, I think yeah. let's take the opportunity to make sure that we really capture on the business impact of AI, we should not slow down on that journey. That's not the message. The message is that the energy that goes into those systems, we should be obliged to reuse that energy so yeah. that we repurpose that. Because then we just, we, we supplement another uh, source of energy by doing Huge so. Huge incentives to, to do so. So AI, GPUs, a part of the really big part of the problem. Do you think AI is going to help us solve the problem because as as a, as the machine gets more and more intelligent, it's probably going to come up with novel ways to reuse. Oh, absolutely. Right, that we haven't thought of. Yeah, and I, and that's the exciting thing. Yeah. And I think with Isambard AI as well as that as a good example where it's open science. So you know, looking at drug discovery, you know, solving uh, problems, and I think then from an environmental impact point of view, AI for good is 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 definitely you know top of the agenda. So what is 
next for your for your co-innovation and partnership? You go first. <laughs> <laughs> I? Well, I, I think that we have all of these opportunities yeah. in front of us because that's what happens when great engineering companies team up, right? Yeah. The, the creative engineers sitting together. So what what we're seeing is this transformation from air-cooled systems to liquid-cooled yeah. systems. Back to one of your questions in the beginning, right? That that will raise the efficiency. It's more efficient uh, doing that with liquid to liquid. So uh, and and we are very well positioned with the yeah. portfolio because we can both cool air and liquid. But that market is going mm -hmm. very fast. I think the other thing is that we got to spread that word. Yeah. Uh, we got to make sure that everyone knows that those technologies and the yeah. services are available for us today. Yeah. And I think from the um, IT sustainability services from HPE, we can join a customer anywhere that where they are on their journey. I think here this week, I mean, since the press release and, you know, I was just super excited because there's so many people that are contacting me and reaching out wanting to know more. And then we're just, you know, we've got a joint go to market but we've also got uh, a pipeline of opportunity that's already there. Um, so I think it's just going to go from strength to strength. And it demonstrates to me that true collaboration of innovation that's making an impact. Whereas sometimes we talk about innovation, but this to me is, is absolutely fantastic than the impact that we can make on the planet. Excellent. Well, this is we've, we've certainly have saved the best for last because <laughs> Sune and Sue, this has been actually a conversation that's given me a lot of hope yeah. and excitement because as you said, we can't slow down AI. We need AI. We need AI to help us solve these challenges. And there are, there are answers out there to the challenges that AI poses. So yeah. very exciting. Dave, it's, it's been a week. You know, I want to just say, because this is our last segment, we're going to get kicked out of here. Usually yeah. we do a little wrap up. I think this Discover is going to be, you know, remembered as a turning point uh, for Discovers. I uh, think the Sphere, the first keynote in the Sphere, that was epic. I think Jensen being on for about 25 minutes mm, yeah. on stage, longer than any other conference other than his own, uh, is, is going to be a very memorable moment. You know, the whole NVIDIA partnership, the private cloud for AI is huge. You know, GreenLake, Maybe it wasn't as front and center this time around, but still there and starting to get a, a, a groove swing. Uh, and then you know, the whole ops ramp thing was kind of interesting and you know, maybe took a back seat, obviously, to, to AI. I'd like to see more on what I call AI dogfooding, how HPE is internally applying AI and how it can help its customers you know, prioritize and then find the best use cases. And um, yeah, the Cube is going to be in Barcelona. Excellent. And I'm excited about All that. Right. And so for, you know, HPE is on the six month cadence now, back on it. Yeah. So we'd love yeah. to see that and uh, great week. It really has, it's been a great week. We've had a big team here. Uh, Obviously you and me, also John Furrier, uh, Rob Strecce, Bob Liberté, a great crew of Jay and Brendan and uh, Ken and Anderson and Tony and Randy. So we've got every, it's been a, it's been a great, well done. a great time. <laughs> yeah, all right, I can, I can name names. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Well, this is, this is going to wrap it up. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. This wraps up theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. We will catch you next time. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.